Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So, to, in today's lesson, I thought of explaining to you guys about the ninth unit, that is light. So, this unit I have divided it into several parts, and today we'll be discussing about the first part. And so, guys, if you like my videos, this video, okay, guys, if you think it's very fascinating, please don't uh, hesitate. Click on the subscribe button, like this video. Also, guys, if you have any questions, comment it and I will answer you guys. And, like, um, also, guys, uh, you, if you guys want, you all can take a paper pen and a pen and jot down what you guys see on the screen because that is the short note that I will be using to explain this lesson. Okay, guys, so now let us all start off with this lesson. So, first, we are going to discuss about the formation of umbra and penumbra. So, umbra is another word used for shadow. Shadows are there, you know, there are many instances where we can see the umbra or otherwise the shadows. Now, here you can see some of those instances. And also, I want, must tell to you guys that this lesson has lots of practicals, lots of activities. So, normally you could do these things at your houses. So, I shall just go through them, you know, in a very basic manner and try to explain them to you guys. You guys do this practical at home and observe them. Observe what happens when you do this practical. And then you will understand what I am trying to explain here in a very clear manner. You will get an idea about it just by reading this and listening to me. But it's better to do the practical and then you will have a better understanding about it. Okay guys, so now let us start off with our first practical, Activity 9.1. Here, we are going to investigate on how umbra or shadows are formed. So we are going to need a candle, a white screen. By a screen, you can use a white wall, a porcelain tile. You could even use, you know, like a cardboard. Otherwise, um, some paper, A4 sheet, anything as long as it's a white thing that can be used as a screen. So, you're going to light the candle and keep it on a table. Then, you're going to fix the screen a little further away from the table, uh, uh, further away from the candle on the table. Okay, guys? And then, you're going to place the ball between the candle and the table. Then, you can observe that there is some dark, um, spot like a thing over here that is somewhat similar to that of the ball size. So, what is that black thing? That is an umbra, also known as a shadow. That is the shadow of the ball. Why is this here? As you can see, the light in this uh, candle will go like this way, and it can also go, you know, like this way to various parts. But as this ball is an opaque object, that means opaque objects do not allow light to go through them. Okay, guys, as this ball is opaque, light does not go through it. It does not go through it. It will reflect most probably, but it does not go through it. Therefore, there is a gap over here that light does not pass through. That gap will create this black spot that is called as the umbra or a shadow okay guys okay now let us move to activity 9.2 where we study about this a bit in a very detailed manner so here is the same practical but we are going to use a torch and we are going to place a transparent glass sheet and an opaque sheet and a translucent sheet between the torch and the ball and do a different practical so first, you take a torch and set up a screen behind in, uh, with a lens, place the ball in front of the screen and keep a small gap between the torch and the ball. You place a transparent glass sheet between them and get the observation. Next, you use a translucent glass sheet and get the observation. Next, you take a cardboard and then you get the observation. So, when you do this activity, you can get this observation. The transparent glass sheet. Transparent things allow light to travel through them. Translucent allow light to travel through them in a very slight amount. 
opaque does not allow light to trans uh, you know go through them at all so in the first instance light goes through this transparent object and touches the ball as usual forming a sharp umbra in the second instance the light goes through the translucent sheet but the amount of light that passes through it is very less therefore there is not much light falling on the ball therefore you get a blurry umbra a blurry shadow next up you use a cardboard something an opaque sheet you will notice that there is no umbra because light does not pass through opaque objects okay guys so when you guys just when you guys are free just try to do this practical then you will get an understanding about this practical in a much more effective manner okay guys so now moving on uh, as you can see this is a figure of um, something interesting okay guys so here you can see there are various shadows this shadow these two shadows are quite long compared to these shadows this shadow is towards this direction this shadow towards this direction this shadow to this this shadow towards this direction like such these shadows have different lengths and different directions why is that now as you can see this is a morning shadow the sun is over here the direction of light comes from this side to this side okay guys and this is the evening shadow here the evening sun is over here light comes from this side to this side and the shadow is formed over here in the noon the noon sun is right above him there are, and the shadow is formed over here so guys can you see that there is some connection between them yes so the connection is uh, you can first let's ask a question from ourselves first question is you can see these shadows are different in length and they are in different directions why is that now you can see that in the morning when the sun is here the shadow is in this direction evening the sun is here the shadow is in this direction light comes from this side so the shadow is here light comes from this side so the shadow is here so what can what does this mean that means the length and the direction of shadows differ during the angle and the direction of sunlight falling on the object the length and the direction of shadows differ due to the angle and the direction of sunlight falling on it so the lengths and the directions of the shadows differ according to the angle and the direction of sunlight falling on the objects okay guys good now then let's move on um now we must understand that during ancient times um people used the length of this umbra shadows as a method to measure time this umbra in this sundial for an example was used as a unit to measure time they made a sundial like this kept it in a very sunny place and this umbra okay guys was used to measure the time it showed them the time so this was a very significant thing about the umbra in the past even nowadays umbras plays a major role for an example there are various artistic creations that can be done using shadows or umbra so over here you can see uh, we can whenever we are free or for an example if there is a power outage whenever you are free you can you know take a torch and try some of these things out you can shape your hand to look like a bird a dog a kangaroo a rabbit an elephant a person with a hat a moose uh, whenever you are free you can just try this out in a dark room or if there's a power outage you know you don't have much things to do you're free so you can use a torch and try to you know have some fun by creating these various creations also there are other types of modern creations out of these there are various dancers and you know events that they showcase using these you can if you want you can go through the youtube the internet and stuff and get more 
uh, details about these um, artistic creations of shadows. Now then, let us go on to the next, to the next, um, to the next uh, activity. Here we are going to need an electric torch, a screen, a small ball. So we are going to place the ball and the screen on a table and light the electric torch. Okay, guys in front of the screen, in front of the ball. Then we are going to um, observe something. First we place this torch a little close to the ball. Then you start to move it a bit away from the ball. As you can see here, first you keep it close, second you move it away. So when you keep the torch close to the ball, while it's on, you can see that there is this dark spot that is direct, that is the umbra, and that is directly the opaque part of the ball. And then you can also see this other part that is slightly dark. That is called as the penumbra. It is formed because of the light rays emitted from the edges of the light source. Can you see? This is a light ray emitted from the edge. Due to this light ray that's emitted from the edges of this light source, an umbra is formed called the penumbra. Okay guys, so that is something we can observe in this. But when you move the torch further, the umbra is sharpened and the penumbra begins to disappear. Okay guys, so if you guys do not like the penumbra, you can just simply get rid of it by moving the torch away from the penumbra. So the conclusion over here is the light source should be far from the object to obtain a clear and sharp umbra. Now let us study about the penumbra in a bit more manner, in a bit more efficient manner. So we are going to take a torch, a ball, a screen and also a polythene and a red and blue marker pins. So you take the polythene and you cover the surface of the torch with the polythene. Divide it into two segments and color one in blue, the other in red. You hold it in front of the ball and you get the in this umbra and the penumbra on a screen. This dark part is the part that is directly under the ball. That directly uh, under the ball. This is the part which represents the opaqueness of the whole ball. And you can see over here there is a bit of um, a blue color and a red color. You no know, guys. So this blue color and red color represents this P number which was emitted by the light rays of the edge. Which was emitted by the edges of this light rays. Okay guys. So the upper part of the P number is blue in color. Lower part will be red in color. And why is this red and blue? Because that is the part of light that is emitted from the edges of the light source. Next up, moving on, we are going to go to some extra knowledge question. So normally they do not um, tend to, you know, stress you all about this lesson, but it is really important. And if you go through this, you can get to know some interesting facts. And also when you go through this, you can have a better understanding about the lesson. So I'll just, you know, like read this out and go through this. So basically in this, what they're telling is that the umbra is formed on a screen because light does not pass through the ball as it's an opaque object. And the penumbra is formed because light rays emitted from the edges of the light source. As you can see, this is the penumbras. Okay, guys. And these are the light, these are the edges of the light source. They are telling that these penumbras are formed from the edges of the light source. Okay guys? Yeah. So, and then they concluded over here saying that the penumbra is formed by light emitted from one part of the light source. So, it is basically right. You know guys? Just see, like now, I told you the penumbra is formed by the light rays emitted from the edges of the light source. I told you by the edges of the light source. So the edges of the light source are also a part of the light source. So the P number is formed by a part of the light source. Okay guys. Okay, moving on. We can now, using this knowledge, get an understanding about an interesting concept 
that is the solar and lunar eclipses. Okay guys, so solar and lunar eclipses occur due to the umbra or the shadow. First we'll talk about a lunar eclipse. When the earth is between the sun and the moon and all three are facing each other in a straight line, the umbra of the earth, the shadow of the earth falls on the moon causing a lunar eclipse. When the moon's surface is covered by the earth's shadow, a lunar eclipse occurs. Next up is a solar eclipse. When the moon is in between the sun and the earth, facing each other in a straight line, the umbra of the moon falls onto the earth. So, the sun cannot be seen for those people in a certain area. This is what is called as a solar eclipse. So, when the moon is between the sun and the earth, a solar eclipse occurs. Okay, guys. So, that is basically it for this whole lesson. For this part one of my uh, the light lesson. Okay, guys. So, now that we are coming to the end of our lesson, uh, at least today's lesson, it's not the end of this unit. Okay, guys, stay tuned for the next part because I will be posting it soon as possible. And if you guys have any questions, don't forget to ask. And if you guys enjoyed the video, learned something and understood the lesson, please click on the bell icon to receive notifications after you guys subscribe to my channel and like my video. So stay tuned. Until next time. Bye.